The first tool I want to look at in this module is the OWASP Z Attack Proxy, or as we commonly know it, ZAP. Now, ZAP is great for a couple of reasons. The first reason is it's free. You can jump on over to OWASP and download it now without having to pay a cent. So that makes the barrier to entry very low. But it is also an enormously powerful tool, and it's particularly good at proxying the traffic from your browser and then enabling you to manipulate that traffic such that you can see how the application behaves under different circumstances. And that's exactly what we're going to do now. So let me jump over to Zap, and it is currently running. Now the thing about Zap is we can use it to proxy all our traffic through. And as soon as you open it up, it's ready to run. Now what I want to do is set Zap so that it breaks on all requests and responses. So I'm going to turn this on. Now what that means is the first time a request actually goes through the Zap proxy, it's going to pause and let me inspect it before it proceeds. So let's now jump over to Chrome and get it to proxy its traffic through Zap. OK, we're in Chrome. Let's jump over to the settings. And I'm going to look for proxy. Change proxy settings. I'm going to go to my LAN settings. And I'm going to make sure that I turn on the proxy server. Now the address is just the local address, 127.0.0.1. And the port is 8080. Incidentally, the same port that Fiddler uses, so don't run both of these at the same time. So we're now going to say OK to that, and then close our settings and simply reload the page. Now, as soon as I do that, I'm automatically flicked back over to Zap. And in fact, what we're looking at here is the GET request that we just made to local.hackyourselffirst.troyhunt.com. So Zap has indeed added a breakpoint on the request. So the request actually hasn't gone through to the server yet. It's been stopped at the proxy. And if we snap this to the right for a sec, we can see that Chrome is still actually trying to load. So clearly it hasn't actually received a response yet because Zap has stopped it. It hasn't actually allowed it to go through. So let me just maximize Zap again. And we'll have a look at what we've got here in this request. So I'll give us a little bit more room just here. And one of the things you'll notice down the bottom of this section is we've got the session ID. And we can see that we have one of these terrible sequential looking session IDs again. And one of the things that we can now do with Zap is actually manipulate this session ID before it gets sent through to the server. So this is a great way of saying, hey, how does the application respond if I try and change the session ID to what I think might be someone else's. So let's do that. Let's change that last four to a five. And now that I've done that, I'm going to go up and turn off the breakpoint. And then I'm going to go over and allow that request to go through. So it's going to submit it and then just continue to step through the remaining requests. So you can see them all just appear there suddenly. The first one is obviously the request for the home page. And then we're seeing all the other assets loaded. So let's now flick back over to the browser. And here is something interesting. So take a look at the menu bar. We're no longer seeing login. We're seeing hello mark. So what I've done is I've just changed that session ID to the session ID of someone else. So effectively, I have demonstrated that I'm able to hijack another session just by manipulating the session ID to a known value. Now this hasn't actually changed my cookie. And in fact, if I hit F5 to refresh the browser, we'll see it now says log in again. So this time Zap didn't actually intercept the request and break on it. It just passed right through the proxy. So Zap is a great way of intercepting requests, taking a look at how they're constructed and then manipulating them in order to test weaknesses in things like session IDs. Now that's only a very, very small part of what Zap does. It is much more powerful than just changing attributes of the request, or the response for that matter. But it is one good example of how you can make testing for the risk of session hijacking just that little bit easier. So that's Zap. Let's now move on and take a look at Burp Suite. And I'm really interested in looking at the strength of those session IDs.